Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Sang. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that recently Sang and I went to our very first Integrity Toys convention. It was our very first time going. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And in this video, we are going to detail for you guys our experience. We have some vlog footage to share with you. Um, we're gonna let you know what to expect in the con. If you wanna jump to specific topics, I will include timestamps in the description below. So to just jump right into it, um, we're gonna give you guys a little bit of background on what the Integrity Toys Convention is and what to expect year to year. It is an annual event. For those of you who are not familiar with what Integrity Toys is as a whole, um, I'm sure a lot of you, if you've been watching us for a while, you already are, but they are a deluxe luxury brand of high-end dolls um, produced primarily for adult collectors. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn more about them, I will link some of our previous Integrity Toys videos and the official website in the description. So, uh, every year Integrity Toys hosts a annual convention for uh, fans of the line and uh, every year it's a different location but essentially they choose a location and they host a couple lunch and dinners and as well as a couple rooms of, um, of special events that you could do. Uh, so this year they chose Portland, Oregon and it's one of the few times at least that we know of that is on the west coast so we were very fortunate to be able to go. Usually it's on the east coast. Um, the Integrity Toys HQ is on the east coast. Yes. So So there are more, more locations on the east coast. This is the largest convention they have hosted so far. Normally they said around 500 tickets are available. This year there's 600. Yeah. So this convention is open to the public but generally speaking the W Club which is their exclusive club for fans. Um, they get information earlier than everyone else and in this case they have first opportunity to purchase tickets to this convention and typically the convention sells out within an hour. So um, the W Club has a couple days head notice to purchase tickets and if it sells out in an hour no, the general public doesn't have the opportunity to purchase tickets. Our impression is that, I mean, I don't know if I want to say it's never happened, it, it seems unlikely and exceedingly rare that the W Club members don't fully just buy out the tickets available because the other option that W Club members have is they can invite one guest mm -hmm. in addition to themselves. So that's your best bet for going if you're not a W Club member is if you have a friend who is and then you can be there. Plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The event itself is really expensive. It is a luxury brand, of course, so you are looking at per person, which is $550. And if you sign up early, you get a $25 discount. A lot mm -hmm. of savings. Each location and theme are usually announced ahead of time. So when we purchased tickets, uh, it was way back, like, like spring, like spring of this year, so it was months in advance to when the actual convention is. So they give you time to save up as well as plan your trip. They have a theme, so this year's theme is Lux Life, which is very vague. They didn't tell us anything explicit about the theme. They just revealed what the title was. <laughs> they have a small and, little yeah. description of it. Yeah, just to reiterate, like Sang said, if you do plan on going to these events, you're gonna wanna budget generally upwards of like a couple thousand dollars honestly if you're planning on going um and what they you know if you want to have a comfortable time at the convention um just because obviously if you if you are familiar with integrity toys at all um the cheapest that they tend to run is like 90 dollars per, per doll and that's like actually very cheap mm -hmm. in comparison because a lot of the dolls that you would be purchasing at the con almost all the ones we bought were 150 mm -hmm. 150 155. yeah so i mean they, there's a bunch of emails leading up to the actual event um there's a massive one that they sent out in around like july where they give you an overview of like the location and how to get there and like hotel options you like oh where you should fly to as well as the hotel and they offer do you discounts on rates for 
the night and um, yeah, they give you options of what to visit while you're there. It is some reading material, <laughs> the W Club emails in general, but yeah, the one thing is, yeah, if you're planning on going, um, even though the emails are kind of a lot and they're wordy, you're going to want to keep up with them um, leading up to the event because sometimes they will have very crucial information. You know, and there's deadlines. In particular, there was a deadline for um, at least one of the dolls we purchased at the event. Um, if we wanted to pick up the doll at the event, we had to purchase her prior and use a very specific link. So you really want to make sure you map all that out, read all your emails. They want to keep all these dolls, the convention dolls, a secret. So they don't, they don't tell you what they look like in advance. But they do give you an option if you want to be more comfortable and you don't have to run around try to buy all these dolls to be able to pre-order and have them shipped to your house um, after you attend the convention. So what they do is they announce the name of the doll as well as like like the theme name that the doll has. So they give you like a, the name of the doll so you know which character it is. So if you like that particular face mold, you can per, you can pre-order the whole collection. Um, yeah, so you can pre-order the collection blind. So you don't get to see it. You get to name the doll and hope for the best. So. I don't know if I personally would recommend doing that unless you're really confident um, you're gonna like everything from the collection because they're, they can be hit or miss, obviously, depending on the theme and your taste or if, you know, if you plan on like selling things that you don't like, yeah. but. <laughs> it's, it's a very modest discount too when you pre-order the whole collection, but the, the, the downside is you are paying shipping to ship these to your house. So it evens out to be honest, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we went to Portland, we flew to Portland, Oregon on a Thursday. So the event starts on Thursday, but you can actually show up on Wednesday early to get your tickets. Um, we were staying with a friend, so we weren't staying at the hotel, so we kind of arrived a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But when you register, you get your name, your name badge, as well as these. You get these voucher tickets for each of the convention dolls. So the 2018 convention collection include Skull Snap, Poppy Parker, Divine Evening, Victoire Rue, uh, Optic Illusion, Giselle Diefendorf, <laughs> Gilded Oligarch, Tatiana, Alexandrova and subtle affluence Eugenia Perrin Frost. Yeah, so these five dolls were announced ahead of time. They are available at the souvenir shop, but what Interior does is they also have surprise, so like little surprises for there for you. So they they uh, revealed three additional dolls, and they were Chiller Thriller, Harper Parker. Prosperous Complexity, Kyori Sato. Opulence for the Bold, Vanessa Perrin. So those ones, they did not announce ahead of time. They just like, here you go, welcome to the convention. Mm -hmm. um, so when you register, you get your name badge, you get these little vouchers for those dolls. Um, one per person for yeah. this collection. Yeah, so yeah. you have to hand them a voucher in order to obtain one. So that's how they check to make sure that each one gets one of each. Yeah, so the only the only opportunity, by the way, for those wondering, um, to purchase duplicates of the dolls from like the main exclusive collections, they do have a free for all, like first come first serve um, on the last day, day on the last day at the souvenir shop, and that's kind of where they dump like what's left of the collections um, after everyone has already gone through their reserve times, which we'll get to that for mm -hmm. the shop. So for people who are assuming you can just like buy duplicates of whatever, like when you first go in, you cannot initially. Yeah, it's not free for all. It's initially it's one yeah. person, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so when you register, you get the vouchers for those, as well as a surprise, well, not really surprise, a welcome doll, a welcoming doll. So uh, this year it was... Um, the Love of Lux, Veronique. Karen. Yes. Yeah. And she was pretty. Mm -hmm. um, and again, she's a free doll, so she comes with your it's in the welcome package. Yeah. yeah. She she comes mm -hmm. in your bag. Yeah. Um, and she comes with a chair, which is really cute. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll we'll have a haul video of everything after this video, so yes. stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the haul. Um, and so that's the convention collection, and they also have a separate shop set up, which was which is called the Style Lab. And this year's theme is called Misbehave. And it's an additional 10 dolls that you can mishmatch. Um, they're naked, so you choose a doll as well as a fashion pack that goes with it. So basically, essentially, on Thursday, we, we arrived there and we picked up our, our welcome bag. And um, we checked out 
the two different um, room setups they had um, had there. So the first one was the uh, was the the we raffle went to the room. raffle room first. We yeah. went to the raffle room slash the, um, the yes. challenge room. Challenge room. Yeah. yeah. So um, so in this room, one side they had these little glass cases of um, one of a kind one of a kind styles. dolls that the designers of Integrity Integrity Toys created. Yeah, so on one side it was the, the raffle dolls, one of kind, the one of kind dolls, which is a raffle. So essentially, you can buy some raffle tickets, a dollar each, to enter to win these uh, super rare original dolls. And people go really crazy. We were very modest. We didn't know what we were getting into. So I think we essentially only bought like. 20 tickets each. I didn't think I was being modest because I bought like at least 20 and then we ended up getting more like later. Yeah, but... some people buy like hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Needless to say, we didn't win. But. Uh, there were some really pretty ones though. Oh, they were like, gorgeous. Some people think they're a lot better than the actual. Dolls, <laughs> again, I mean, sure, the, the cost of making these also a lot higher than mm -hmm. what or the convention dolls were. There's like a unicorn Misaki mm -hmm. and things that were very unique for integrity in the one of a kind room for sure. Um, uh, and then on the other side of the table of the room is a table with all well, the challenge dolls. The, um, the dolls a competition. They were hosting a competition. On the other side there was two types two types of competition. There was a dire Rama, and our Rama competition, which, interesting enough, there was only one entry this year, and it's, it's very pretty. I think the, the, the setup is really pretty. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want that for my doll photography. No, seriously. Yeah. Um, and then the other portion of it, of it is like a doll slash outfit competition, and there were like, like two dozen, like two dozen entries, I think, mm -hmm. and they're all really pretty. And what you do is. You can vote for your favorite and enter it, and at the final night they announce the winner. Same thing with the raffle. So the next room over is the museum, which houses these glass cases of so it's a 2018 collection of all the Integrity doll dolls within the year. So they had the Mizakis that we got, as well as the Sacred Lotus collection. So some of these dolls aren't even out yet. So this, this is our first. Coming. Yeah, yeah, so these are our first look at some of them. So that yeah. was pretty cool. Some of the counterculture dolls that aren't out yet. The um, the Lilith and Eden that were like newspaper themed. Mm -hmm. I think they should have included previous years. Like it would be like a, yeah. a history of interior like Actual toys. museum. Yeah, it would have yeah. been cool if they included some like classic like grail dolls on display in there. I think that would have been kind of a cooler experience in that room, which by the way, both the raffle room and the museum, just as a heads up, were very tiny and very claustrophobic. Um, as, yeah, I know. would say they only house like about, at maximum, yeah. like 20 to 25 people. Yeah, so. So we had to take turns getting there. Mm -hmm. But if you go during like a quiet time, it should be fine. And they were doing nothing to control traffic. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like free flowing, people coming in and out, which by the way, so this event was at the downtown Portland Marriott Hotel. Um, and just we, in case we didn't make it clear earlier, um, the Integrity Toys Convention will generally be hosted at the hotel that they like recommend people to stay at for the event. So this was inside the Portland Marriott. Um, so essentially you had, um, you know, they rented out the Marriott's small event rooms plus their large ballroom. You know, for those of you who have a perception of like convention center setting, like that, it's not like that at all. They usually just tend to rent out um, like a floor more or less of like a hotel. There wasn't really too much to do on Thursday. It was, um, was you can check out these rooms and as well as you have a, bracket of time slots for for you to enter the souvenir shop as well as the style lab shop and um, we were one, in one of the later ones we were actually like second to last group to get in and we noticed the line was in particularly really long it was like it wrapped around the whole room we stood down there until like 4 30 and the staff came out and they were like unfortunately we're really behind so you need to come back tomorrow at 7 a.m. 7.30 30 in the morning. 
Yeah, so. they turned our group away and we had to come in with crazy early in the morning, which mind you, we had not initially planned to do that. Yeah, we didn't have much to do because we got turned away from shopping. Like, they don't want our money. So the welcome to Lux dinner, the welcome dinner is was in the evening and there is a table number that you're assigned to and you'll be sitting at this table number for the majority of the food the events, event. the, yeah, yeah, the big food like event. lunches and dinners. At this event, when we first came in, we found a table, and at the end of center table was um, Adele, and she was dressed in this really cute little gold and red outfit, and she is what they consider a center centerpiece doll, and a centerpiece doll is a raffle doll, a raffle doll not to win, but a raffle doll. The right, right to, to purchase. purchase. Yes. Yeah. Within each table, each person is assigned a number, and that's how it is determined who wins. So they choose seven numbers out of ten numbers, and those seven people have the right to purchase these dolls. That is a raffle, but the cool thing is they guarantee that you win two out of three dolls they have as centerpiece for each for at, at the meet at the meals. It can be nerve wracking depending on. Which one you want. Determining which one you want and when you're going to win and when you're not. Yeah. yeah. So Max and I, on the first night, both won the right to buy Adele. And they did serve dinner, of course, because it was a dinner. The food at the first dinner was delicious, honestly. It was like roasted chicken and risotto. It was super yummy. Um, I was impressed by the quality of the food, honestly. And it's really, I think, these luncheons and dinners that when you go in, you really feel like you're at like a grand event. Mm -hmm. I think that was like the first time at the con where I was like, oh, okay, I'm at like a big event right now. At, and at the meal, they're like, there's a surprise for you on the table, and uh, it was the first giveaway doll. Luxuriously gifted Natalia. And she was a free doll. Yeah, so every single luncheon and dinner had one um, giveaway doll, which was mm. essentially just a doll you receive for attending the event. In the past, I know they have done like, like furniture and clothing, but yeah, for, for this convention, every free item was a doll. So that was our first day, and we did some stuff in Portland afterwards. Yes, And on Friday, we didn't show up at 7.30 like no. we were supposed to. <laughs> we were super we late. We forgot that, sorry, we weren't at the, the, the hotel and yeah, they're in Portland. With Lyft. So, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of traffic, mm. needless to say. So, we got there at, at like 8 30 and like everyone had left already. So, we kind of like got snuck in and we made our purchases and we'll show you that later. It was really chill. Um, there was, we didn't really have to deal with a line. Um, it was actually lower key than what I was expecting. Um, and they do guard the doors of the souvenir shop very carefully. Um, you're let in when it's like time for you to be let in and you check all of your other bags and personal items at the door. And then they let us inside the souvenir shop. Um, and it was super cute. It was, you know, this nice little setup of the primary convention collection dolls. Um, and you know, we have the option of purchasing a bunch of different ones. If you want to see everything of what we purchased, we will cover that in the haul video. Um, but it was really cute too because they had stuff in addition to the dolls. They had yeah. a bunch of like... They had like new dolls, um, as well as like little fashion packs that were left over from previous like conventions. And they had a little setup for, um, Azone. 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 Azone, which is their Japanese, um, sister <gasps> location. And they were cash only. So make sure <laughs> yes. you bring some cash in. Um, luckily, the people at the door let me like go out real quick to use the ATM. Mm -hmm. There was an ATM on site, and that was just just it, that cash was cash only for a zone A. Yeah, yeah. The rest yeah. of the things. everything else, the whole. Which, by the way, that was the only moment of the whole con where that was cash only that we experienced. So every, everywhere else, they take card. But this is also the part of the con where you can expect your money to be flying out the door because even you if you had, buy like- You thought you had money at one point and then <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Yeah, even if you buy like three dolls, that's already what, like- Four fifty. Four hundred, five hundred dollars. Yeah, so it's, so that's when you need to prepare yourself to like be spending massive amounts of money all at once because you do need to make the decisions on what you want to purchase during your time slot, like while you're in there. Um, there is another opportunity to go during the free for all, first come, first serve, but um, the traffic can be high for that and 
you just don't know what'll end up happening for that. So then we jump straight into the Misbehave Style Lab um, room. And it's a little different this year than previous years because there was a delay in the manufacturing of the dolls that are in that room. They had the prototypes set out for everyone to see and um, you can purchase vouchers for everything and um, the dolls will be shipped to your house free of charge, which is really nice. They um, all have to be shipped to one address. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, we probably will be getting these like a little bit later, like probably in December. December was the estimate of yeah. when ship, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so you have the option of purchasing, again, early on, the whole collection or show up in person and pick and choose of what you want. Um, so we got there and you decided, so it's a little, it was so many changes this year. So this year they also did this thing where, again, there are 10 dolls, but there is a secret 11th doll that you kind of like build yourself. So each of the 10 dolls have a component to build the 11th doll. So if you're familiar with like, doll, yeah. yeah, it's like, if you're familiar with like action figures, like the Marvel Legends, like it's literally like, this character has an arm, this character has a leg, and you build this doll. Mm -hmm. So you have to buy all of them to complete her, basically. Right. So, um, so Max bought the whole collection, so he's gonna get 11 dolls. And the 11th doll is Poppy Parker, and she, I, someone was saying was saying that she is in a new like skin tone. Um, so she's, cream, so yeah, she was a cream, cream colored, so yeah. it's extra special. I feel like it's one of, I don't want to say only, but it seems like it's one of the only um, releases of Poppy where she's in non-retro clothing. Yeah, she's in very, very modern clothing for this Build-A-Doll version. After that, we had the Poppy Parker Luncheon, and uh, that one, um, we had a buffet of like barbecue. It was really delicious. It was also really good. It mm -hmm. kind of like wrecked our stomachs, but, or may have. We had like yeah. stomach issues afterwards, but it was super good though. It was like, there was like cornbread muffins and really good chicken, like yeah. honey butter, stuff like that. It was very like, yeah. Yeah, so it's the same, it's same situation where we walked in, we sat down with the same people and there was a centerpiece doll this time. It was... Snowstopper Poppy, yeah. so pink. Super pink, super very Barbie. Yeah, it was, it was super Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Don't hate us, but it's very Barbie. <laughs> Again, we did a raffle, and Max won, and I didn't. They announced the next collection of Poppy Parker is going back to a previous theme that they did before, which was like kind of like the retro like spy theme. But this, Super Austin Powers. Yeah, but time they're incorporating like the Bossa Nova. It was really interesting, actually. Something it sort of seemed like they did at multiple events is the music they play when you walk in is a cute little like Not hint, cute, hint yeah. to like what the event is going to be about, what the reveal will be related to. Um, and so they played Austin Powers music when we were walking in, and we were like, that's interesting. Yeah. So they announced what the item underneath the table was, and it was another Poppy Parker, and this time she is Lemon Frost. Lemon Frost, and she is unique in the sense that she is an African-American skin tone with heel legs, I think they were saying. Super pretty, and you know, I, I don't, I personally, I'm maybe there have been other releases of her, I don't, I think it was my first time seeing in person like a dark-skinned Poppy. Yeah. It was really cool. After that, we kind of just did our own thing until uh, the evening kind of um, optional menswear collection. Oh, let's get into that, yeah. <laughs> so we came back at 7, and uh, this was kind of like an event that they boasted as the return of the, mm -hmm. the on body. Um, so the men's side of dolls have been kind of stagnant for a little while, so this event is supposed to like reveal what their plans on uh, the men's collection. Yes, it was optional. Yeah, we so paid. we did not sit, yeah. yeah, we didn't sit with our usual group. It was an optional meal. By optional, I mean you pay. Yeah, it was uh, 120. It was 120. It was 150. No, 120. 120. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 120, and you with 120, you get a meal. We got a doll. 
That was it. <laughs> there was a there meal. was food. There was there wasn't a meal. There was food there. Like finger food. But yeah, we'll we'll get into the issues with that in a second. But we showed up at the menswear event, and like Sang said, um, yeah, it's not the same table assignments because it is optional, so not all the same people are going to be there. But it wasn't the same ballroom as the luncheons and dinners thus far. Um, one of the Integrity Toys designers, I believe the one specifically in charge of um, working with the um, you know, collections and the male dolls was there. Um, and they basically, you know, discussed the reveal of Monarchs, which is, you know, new direction of the male dolls. Yeah, the new, like, the branding mm -hmm. of the dolls. Instead of, um, like, fashion royalty, it's now the monarch monarchs. Yes. Um, and they talk about the new body mold and how it's um, model modeled after kind of like the male models nowadays. A bit more slimmer, more tone. Um, they talked about how some of the changes they made was due to the fact that um, they wanted to do more layering on like the outfits and stuff. So they made the thighs and the hips thinner um, or in order to like accommodate the fact that now these dolls are wearing more clothing. They also revealed, re revealed um, the new collection that they're working on and it's top secret because he's still, like the designer's still working on it. So we weren't able to film it or take pictures. So it's, it's pretty cool at some of these events, like you will, you know, they will share like confidential information with you and they will basically tell everyone like, you cannot take pictures of this, you can't share it. So we cannot give details about what was shared in that portion of the event. Um, but yeah, they did, you know, um, reveal the new body which was incorporated into the doll that we received at the event, um, which, yeah, real quick, mm, I have not so positive thoughts on the new body that they're using. I don't know, I have a lot of thoughts on it. I think they went in a direction, you know, of making the new male body very, very slim, um, which I'm kind of whatever about, because I was hoping they would go in an opposite direction, because I'm already kind of of the opinion the integrity male body mold is pretty lean as is. Um, and I also have issues with the way the chest looks in this new body. It just looks really, it looks lopsided to me, the chest. Um, and I don't know, I was not a huge fan. Um, I definitely could see how it might make certain articles of clothing easier to put on the doll, which is great, you know, if they, I, but uh, one thing they did confirm though is this new body mold is not going to be used like across the board for all male integrity dolls. Um, so they, they will still be continuing to produce the standard male body mold. But I think it would have been cool if there was like a variance of body molds, if they had like a larger mold and a smaller mold, but that might be asking too much, especially because I don't think there's a huge variance in even female body molds with integrity, so. I mean, there's subtle changes from like body molds. From like a technical standpoint, the new body mold is a bit more it's more functional, I guess. But. It's more functional because, again, you are dressing up these dolls. So with the event, um, we got a free doll, and it was Declan. Declan Wake. Well, he was nude, essentially. He had some, he had underwear and a fanny pack, and um, we did notice that the centerpiece stand was at the table, but there was no centerpiece dolls. And within the description of the event, there was supposed to be a right to buy doll as well. But they did not mention anything, and they kind of just like let us out, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That so was really quick too. It was like it was supposed to be two and a half hours, yeah. but we were inside for literally like less than three minutes. I yeah, the, sure. the, yeah, the the seminar stuff was less than thirty minutes. Yeah. So that was really odd and left a really like sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Like I we I, I looked at the forums and a lot of people were really confused and angry, and they talked to like the staff and apparently. There was supposed to be a centerpiece doll, but he got delayed with the manufacturing issue in China. Yeah. So he didn't show up. But I think in the future, if Integrity had an issue like this, it should be upfront with us and be yeah. like, hey, sorry guys, like there was supposed to be something here. But um, they did announce at the following event that this happened. And anyone who attended the event will be notified later, later have the option of purchasing the doll that was delayed. So 
they, they yeah, so they made they it. They rectified nice. it. Yeah. Yeah, they took care of the issue with that. There was like finger food there, but you had to like grab it from this table where they didn't explicitly like tell people like where to get it. And I just suddenly started seeing like people with food around us and I didn't know where to go. Yeah, so the whole thing was just kind of confusing and mishandled a little bit, but um, that was, it, I think it was all probably just part of because I had high expectations for that event because I love Integrity Mail Dolls and it just didn't turn out how I wanted. Yeah. But moving on. So that was it for Friday. So on Saturday, which was the, fa the final day of the convention, we had an uh, optional luncheon and this was the W Club only luncheon. So it's only available for the W Club members. Um, so we had to pay an additional amount for this one. I think it's about $120. Greeted again with another centerpiece doll, but Unlike the previous ones, everyone had the right to buy it. So if you want it, you can get her. Oh yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it was the the theme of the the luncheon was new face, and um, it was a really pretty Lilith Lilith Blair Lilith Blair doll. Yeah. They talked about a bunch of like upcoming dolls for the W Club as well. A little bit a little bit of a hint of what's coming next year. So thrilled to have you all here. Um, know lots of you, getting to know more of you. How many of you are first time W Club members this year? Oh my goodness, give a round of applause for our new members. It's amazing that even in a hobby like this, which is smaller, that we grow by leaps and bounds. We were somewhere 20 to 25 percent growth this year. Or to Jesse Ayala, he's one of the main primary designers, I believe, for New Face Fashion Royalty. Yeah, and he talked about what's to come. This was probably the first meal we had where like the quality of the food started going down a little bit. It was like a yeah. luncheon, but it's kind of like breakfast seafood as well. They gave us a salad, which was good. Salad was the best part. <laughs> salad was good. And then yeah. the main entree was a really... like a, a breakfast quiche, which was really dry and I didn't, I couldn't eat it. And they gave us some cake, carrot cake. The carrot cake was really good. Yeah, carrot cake was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, they they uh, they uh, showed us what the giveaway doll was, and it was Eden. And Eden's very pretty. She has pink hair. So gorgeous. Oh yeah, she was. I think, we'll in my opinion, I think in my opinion, she looks better than Lil. But um, yeah, people are freaking out because like twins always make an appearance. So real quick, before we get into the final gala. Um, there were a lot of <laughs> events aside, like outside of the ones we covered. Um, there's other optional events. So there's things like, was it like workshops, things where you can like make your own accessories and um, like reroute sure a doll's head. You can reroute dolls. Yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff to do. Um, Not really, there's like three events. There's three workshops. Yeah, I mean, but keep in mind though for the specialized events, yeah, you will generally you'll have to like pay okay. extra. Yeah. So, so for the final gala, we sat with the same group of people as the other ones, and uh, the centerpiece doll was um, Agnes. Affluent demeanor, Agnes then face. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I was like, she's super pretty, super pretty. Yeah. And we sat down, and I was like, time for the raffle, and I was like, I haven't been called. I didn't. I wasn't called for the Parker Parker, so I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm getting Agnes. Mm -hmm. And I had a, well, I had a feeling Max wasn't getting it, and sure enough, it's horrible. It's hard. I got it, and Max got <laughs> it. Um, and once again, no one wanted to give up theirs, which is fine. In case anyone is wondering, um, like how to dress for this con as a whole, um, a lot of people were pretty much in like casual clothing, like you know, like wearing whatever the whole event. But I definitely did notice, and it was kind of said to us ahead of time, that for the final, the, the gala, you know, the big event at the end, that people dressed a little nicer, especially for this one's theme. And I definitely did notice that, that people um, were dressed classier, you know, for the final event. And uh, I know you've been busy with some other stuff. You've got a documentary coming out. <laughs> yeah, so I've been working on a documentary. Very exciting, because a lot of it covers my history in dogs, which is oh. Um, Coming up to the stage, Jason, 
um, just give us again a little bit of flavor of what your inspiration was for the convention. So this convention is a, a sister to Agnes, you see. It's about the Let's Live, so there's, you know, she is um, in gorgeous, gorgeous tour. And, uh, and very much that same inspiration from Nana Kwa, Sam Orano's foot, that I'm so often inspired by. So um, you'll see that reference today. And for those of you that know, which is all of you, it's probably um, one of my favorite characters. So let's <laughs> just. Okay, so we've got the whole team. Can we get a big round of applause for everyone? <laughs> so, drum roll for your efficient conventional. <laughs> They definitely went with, you know, I actually think it was really cool that they went with kind of like, you know, the whole Lux life, the whole thing was like, you know, like a classy luxury theme. They they went full on like like royalty, basically, for the final two dolls. They mm -hmm. both had like crowns and everything, so. And another thing we should bring up is uh, we got to meet some really awesome people that we've known in the doll community for a really long time. We got to meet them in person, like never forever. It's Alex B. and um, it was really cool. Um, that was kind of a general comment I wanted to make too, is honestly, Integrity Toys seems to have like a really cool community. I was actually like pleasant, not that I was expecting like anything bad, but I was pleasantly surprised by how kind and like polite all these people were. Like people were so polite, like even in the areas where it was really crowded and you bump into people, it's like people are so apologetic, like I'm so sorry. People were really sweet. Um, so I have like nothing but positive things to say about the community. My perception of the community is really cool people. Yeah, definitely. I think the best thing about the event is the people. So at this event, they kind of like announced what their plans are for um, for next year, at next convention. And next year is kind of a special year. It is the 10th anniversary of Poppy, Poppy, Poppy Parker. Parker. Yeah. And so they're gonna focus a little bit on her a little more, but again, it's not. But they are insisting it's not PoppyCon. Yes, <laughs> which some of us want. Some of us want PoppyCon. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a big year, and um, it's gonna be back in apparently in their home state of Maryland at in but Baltimore. Headquarters in Baltimore. Yeah. So next year's convention will be in Baltimore. So mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. So hopefully we will go and we'll meet more cool people. Maybe some of you. We met some of you at this convention as well. So hello! Hi! Do I want to go again? Sure, definitely. It's very expensive, I think. You're looking around at least like $2,000 for everything. Yes. I totally enjoyed going. It was a great experience. Um, if you're an Integrity Toys collector, I would definitely recommend it. I would say if you can afford to go, you should go. If you can't afford to go, don't go. <laughs> because it is very, 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 very expensive. Yeah, literally you yeah. blink and like a grand is gone. Yeah. And I mean, it's if, if you really wanted to go out of your way to do like a budget version of the trip, like, like. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You could do a budget version. You like, could. I mean, you could, if you I just, mean, if you don't buy anything, like, like, like just don't buy so anything. You want to rely on the giveaway dolls, basically. Yeah, you yeah. get essentially like three or four dollars for free, so. Mm -hmm. I'm really sad that I wasn't an Integrity fan sooner, because I think I would have really, really loved last year's theme. It was fashion fairy tale. It was like fairy tale themed. Um, I do have to say, I hope at some point in future years, they'll go back to doing something like a little bit fun and out of the box like that, because it seems like most of the other themes have kind of aligned with like what people expect from Integrity Toys, like luxury and high fashion and that kind of thing i would love to at some point see them do another like fun you know mm -hmm. like unique theme so yeah. hopefully at some point that happens again oops we did not film a proper outro for this video but thank you so much everyone for watching our experience and vlog video of integrity toys con 2018 lux life let us know what you'd like to see next time on our channel next year at integrity con and we will see you next time bye